Welcome back to another Real Talk Reaction. This one's for Community Season 5, Episode Number 8. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well. Tell a friend to tell a friend. It helps the algorithm all day, every day, 24-7, 365. Don't skip. Alright, so a couple comments from episode 7, starting with executive producer Faye, who says, Awesome reaction. I think my favorite is the Chang storyline with a ghost and especially with a picture. I also like how Annie said that Chang can't be in the group if he's going to be actively insane, which I find <laughs> smart of the writers, and the shining reference with the picture was hilarious to me. Yeah, I think that sense. watching the Hickey story with you guys gave me a new appreciation for it. I've always considered it the weakest part of the episode, but on the watch, I liked it. Uh, but on this watch, I liked it and found it as strong as the Brita storyline. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but I full-sided with Hickey when he called Ovid spoiled and how everyone tries to tiptoe around him, because uh -huh. I think that's true. Yeah. Jeff and the rest of the study group really care about Ovid, but they do accommodate him a lot. Uh -huh. Anyway, funny, uh, funny episode again. I agree with Shirley. There hasn't been a lot of her this season, at least not yet. Edit, you mentioned you were wondering about whether this episode ties in with the ha with Halloween, and I checked, and the episode aired in February. But it still had this spooky feeling to it. So okay. Did. So I, I thought it might be a Halloween, but it wasn't. So did it. <laughs> All right, Taylor Jackson says, I generally like Hickey, but he was a total bully this episode, although it was interesting to see Abed genuinely get angry and frustrated for a change. Uh -huh. The Chang storyline this episode was a huge mindfuck, but watching your reaction to it was hilarious. <laughs> Keep up the great work. Can't wait for the next episode. Oh, thanks. Real. And the, like, yeah, was it real or not real? <laughs> <laughs> Executive producer Adam says, This was such a great episode. I love Duncan taking the spotlight of an episode for a change. It was a great way to see Jeff's relationship with someone outside of the study group and the dean. I also felt so bad for Britta in this episode. Her friends were such jackasses and really deserved some sort of come up ends for their condescending attitude. Mm -hmm. It was nice of Duncan to not go for Britta while she was vulnerable, even though she admitted that she would have gotten with him. I love how poorly he hid this when he discovered that he missed his chance with her by waiting for the right moment. Mm -hmm. You snooze, you lose, That's Duncan. Right. I absolutely loved Abed's subplot as well. I appreciate that even though Troy is gone, they are still acknowledging his absent. Abed was clearly already on edge because he missed his best friend, and the fact that Hickey handcuffed him to the cabinet and made him miss his movie clearly sent him over the edge. Mm -hmm. This is easily the angriest we've ever seen Abed get, and it was not pretty. It just goes to show, don't fuck with Abed when it involves a movie. Yeah. You will live to regret it. Hickey mm -hmm. learned that the hard way, but it honestly served him right. You don't handcuff a student and hold them hostage, to quote his lame duck cartoon, what the hell? Alright, last comments from Varys who says, Wilson does seem extreme to restrain a student. I completely agree with Hickey's actions in this episode because Ovid should not always get unconditional support when it comes to his behavior, which is consistently disrupting the daily lives of the whole campus. The Chang storyline was another favorite of mine because of its sheer randomness, which leaves me wondering every time whether or not he actually saw ghosts or it was just his sanity slipping briefly once again. Yeah. Looking forward to the next episode. Yeah. They did. They handled that very well. And who was he yelling at on the phone? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> um, all right, guys. Let's jump in episode eight right now. Okay, we'll get an estimate on adding grass to the side of the field. Good meeting. Oh, Jeff, what time's dinner? Uh, dinner? Jeff, you didn't invite Shirley? Well, it's Tuesday. Uh, surely I always goes to Elijah's karate practice on Tuesdays. It's okay. Part of making sacrifices for my loved ones is not expecting my loved ones to make sacrifices. Aww. I can do tomorrow. <sighs> I can't. I'm free on Fridays and Mondays. We're not moving it! When Shirley can have dinner, we'll have another dinner. Because it's just dinner. And there's no need to manipulate each other. I mean, you know that's what you do. And you know you're doing it now with that face. You don't like my face? Oh. <laughs> Hello, say Greendale Committee. This is David and Vixel. They're app designers. They'd like to beta test their latest social networking app on our campus, which could be good for us. Look what Facebook did for Harvard, right? Hey guys, Vixel and I would like to introduce you to a little app called Meow Meow Beans. Oh. Meow Meow Beans yeah. lets you say how much you like, who you like, when you like, all from a standard non-boost mobile phone. Let's see how it works. Pixel, what did you think of the way the Dean introduced us? I thought he did great. That's why I'm giving him five Meow Meow Beans. Aww. Well, Pixel, I'm sorry, but I thought his intro was 
just okay. That's why I'm going to give him two out of five Meow Meow Beans. My meow Meow Beans. With Meow Meow Beans, this students like that, can um, rate teachers. Like teachers can rate students. Everyone and anyone can rate each other. Meow Meow Beans. Hey, this is like that Black Mirror episode. Yeah. I could. Or Shark Tank. I fought for this country. And I know you don't get to pick and choose the parts you fight for. But I know. I should go number two soon. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you gotta say you don't like that? <laughs> Beta test day one. Hurry up! I'm late for human rights class. I'm sorry. Yeah, that is like um, why is Starburns carrying Garrett's books? It's like toast bossing crackers around. I mean, yes. Garrett's got three meow meow beans. Starburns is a two. Are you telling me people are yeah, using this like stupid the app? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, no, it's effectively stupid. There already was a rating system in place called Cool People Get More, and it was working fine. Meow meow beans takes everything subjective and unspoken about human interaction and reduces it to explicit and objective numbers. I've never felt more alive. As long as you're happy, I'm on set. As long as you're happy. Hey guys. What happened to you? I sat on a toilet swallow, my feet fell asleep. Then I noticed limping was getting with meow meow beans. So I just kind of started committing. Yeah. Did you understand a word he said? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, he's not. Yeah, look, everyone's obsessed with their phones, babe. To another degree. I'm trying to give me some more yow yow beans. Hey, here you go. Here you go. Nobody is going to downvote a guy on his birthday. Wait. Are you using meow meow beans to get kill it? Join it. And when you get older, you go to see kill it. Jordan. Mark. Mark Zuckerberg is Fidel Castro in flip flops. Meow Meow Beans is going to make East Berlin look like Woodstock. You take my word for that. Do you own stock in Trivial Pursuit's Baby Boom Edition? <laughs> Baby Boom Edition. Britta, please tell me you're not using this app. Uh, I liked the idea at first, giving a voice to the unheard, but then Annie just told me that the rating system is exponentially weighted. As your ratings go up, your ratings of other people become more important. No. It just means the more others like you, the more likable you can make others. Makes sense to me. You know who else it makes sense to? Say Hitler one more time and I'm giving <laughs> you a two. Jeff, are you not registered? The longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to get your number up. Annie, listen to yourself. You're learning its language. You're letting a video game play you. I'm going to set these people straight. <laughs> Students of Greendale! We don't have to worship a calculator! There is no formula for people! Oh, you're punishing yeah. me for being alive! That's the general idea, baby. Hey, this is so much like, like we're upset. But you were getting through to me more with mustard on your lip. Oh, shut up. He's not kidding, Britta. I thought I was imagining it. When you had mustard on your lip, I was more open to your opinion. Maybe it dilutes or distracts from your excessive intensity? Maybe it dilutes or distracts from your stupid butt? Mm. And How do you do it, I once loved it, too. <laughs> Matthew. He was my everything. Matthew. But... Numbers change. <laughs> I'll keep your secret, new beans. New beans. Baby, why, are, why are all the regular people wearing the green thing in these outfits? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I beg you not to take this risk. You know what they say. Fives have lives, fours have chores, threes have fleas, twos have blues, and ones don't get a rhyme because they're garbage. Like right, they're garbage. <laughs> Jeff Winger. I recently became a four. 
Funny thing is, when I was a two, I didn't actually have any less. But I did have a lot of crazy friends. Hey, my name's Tommy Toluca. I'm from Hallway C. I'm a two. So says Captain Kugler. Actually, keep the trade tables where they are, Kugler. The rule of the fives is over. Long live the revolution. No! It comes down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, babe, look at the Outlands! The Outlands! The Outlands! Why doesn't anybody just go home? Happy? Are you happy? <laughs> I knew you couldn't go to that stupid dinner. That's why I didn't even <laughs> Why are you sleeping at me? You got Bob Don't freak. Oh, well, you clearly hate the troll. No. I love it. I guess it's easy to pretend that you don't when you got it. You'd think we'd be better friends because we're both such big fans of the same thing. You there, one! You are permitted back indoors by decree of Britta, the mother of one. And do I hear correctly oh God, that at the five you felt you could park in She just busted cats? crazy yeah. out of place. But see, that's just part of the cougar style. It's human crap style. Britta! Britta! Okay, but that's low. Okay, well that's it. Oh, Who is this guy anyway? Must be clear. Photocopying my rear end. Bob Kugler. I guess I have what you might call an aversion to education. You need a have a career plan. Yeah, uh, does getting laid count? No! Mitchell D. Hurwitz is Kugler. Bring it on. Alright, that was episode 8, and we still don't know who Kugler is, but he was a great character on this episode right here. I mean, he came through out of nowhere. I thought he, he was a good rendition, a uh, good addition to the episode. I mean, he injected some, some good, funny parts in there. But, again, love how we just over-committed to the joke 100%. We went from day 1, day 2, to day 8. We are 50 years in the future at that point on day 8. And that shit was hilarious. And everybody did a great job of it. I loved it. It was a a, a, a copycat clone, whatever, of uh, Black Mirror, that episode with the with the app. But they still did a great job. Well, I don't know which one funny. went first. or this Yeah, might which have been the, one went first. It could have been first. a prequel yeah. to that. But... Still, it, they did a great job of just over-exaggerating it and making it hilarious as hell. And I just had a good time with it, man. And this is this is what I come here for, for community, for sure. And uh, I just cannot wait to see another one. Um, I absolutely love this episode. If you guys have not seen that Black Mirror episode, it's one of my favorite Black Mirror episodes ever. I'll have to figure out what it is and I'll put it in the comment. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, and I'm going to look it up, so I'll know after this, obviously. That's um, what um, Bryce Dallas have. Yes. Uh, so good, mm -hmm. um, but they executed it in only a way community can and does and completely committed to it. I found it freaking brilliant and hilarious and so spot on, so good. I love Abed being like, I don't want to be up here in the top echelon, so to speak. I like being down in the regular. I thought that was so key to his uh, personality too. But having Shirley, who's been like super low key this season, be the one that dominated, which goes so well with her yeah, character and her and Jeff kind of sparring it at out uh, against Spar each that, other yeah. um, in this plot works so well for it too. So I thought it was just brilliant. I loved it so much. I totally agree though. The Coogler uh, character really added a different dynamic to it, although I don't know who it is. We tried to look it up this no, time, too. Good, um, I don't know if it was something that was supposed to be recognizable, because it felt like a character you should recognize, because yeah. they totally committed and even had them the, uh, uh, end the credits, too. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I love this so much. This is one of my favorite episodes of the season so far. Yeah. I just thought they nailed it completely and executed it so well, and it was just spot on. So yeah. I had a lot of fun with this one. All right, well, look, thank you guys again for watching another Real Talk Reaction for Community Season 5, Episode Number 8. And until next time, people, peace.